Hi, my name is Musa Mshanya, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about a paper we just published in Cell called Chromosomal Contact Permits Transcription of Co-Regulated Genes. Every cell in your body contains DNA, and if we were to lay out the DNA end-to-end, -end, we'd find that we'd have a length of DNA in each of your over 1 trillion cells about the length of your iPhone headphones. So that's around 1.5 meters long. And by some feat of origami, this DNA is folded many, many times so that it's almost invisible to the naked eye. And actually, the fact of folding this DNA into many, many times smaller than its one-dimensional length results in the fact that all the DNA is in contact and touching each other in many different ways. And for a long time, scientists have speculated whether the actual contact of the DNA had some influence on whether genes would change from the off state to the on state. In our work in this paper, we show that the long-standing question of whether genes contact is involved in their activation is actually true. So we have this very long polymer of DNA, which is around 1.2 to 1.5 meters long. And this all has to get compressed into a space which is a million times smaller than the length of this piece of DNA. And Stephanie's going to explain to you how this happens. So the DNA, which is the blueprint of your cell, as Musa mentioned, needs to be housed or compacted inside the nucleus, which is in each cell. And this here, we, we can see the nucleus. And it's folded on many levels. And if you had to uncompact each level, you would eventually get down to your DNA. Because there is so much DNA housed inside the nucleus, there's going to be places where the DNA touches or intersects. So as we were speaking about, there is this enormous amount of DNA that's compacted into a nucleus, which is 1 50th the size of a grain of sand. So the point I'm trying to make is that the nucleus is a highly crowded environment. And because of this, there's going to be regions where the DNA intersects or touches. And this is referred to as gene kissing. And it's been known for a very long time that this happens, but what has not been understood is how this impacts on the ability of genes to be switched on. So there's elements in the DNA which are called genes. And in order for genes to be switched on, the gene is converted into a message. And that message is referred to as RNA. And there's many, many things that need to happen in order for that gene to be switched from the off state into the on state. So for instance, you need a transcription factor to bind to the promoter, you need the polymerase, and when this happens, the gene can be transcribed. And that means it goes from its off state into its on state. And when it's in its on state, there is a message, and that message is referred to as the RNA. We understand very well in one dimensional space how this happens, but what we don't know is in the three dimensional organization, how that impacts on the ability of a gene to go from the off state to the on state. So as Stephanie was explaining, we have this very high degree of compaction in the nucleus and we also have this one-dimensional understanding of how when DNA gets converted to RNA, the gene changes from an off state to an on state. And the long-standing question was, in three-dimensional space, whether the contacts between these genes influence the activation state. In other words, does the three-dimensional contact between the DNA influence whether the gene changes from the off state to the on state? So we set up a very simple situation. We found three genes that were located in three different regions, two different chromosomes. Gene A in blue, gene B labeled here in green, and gene C on a different chromosome labeled in red. These three genes come together when we induce their activity to form something that's been termed a multi-gene complex. And when the three of them come together, we know that the genes change to the active state. At least we had a correlation that happened. We didn't actually know that that happened because the genes came together. We could have, that could have simply happened because the genes are in the same place. So by being able to visualize these, we came up with the following experiment. If we would prevent the blue gene from being in contact with the green gene or the red gene, or prevent the green gene from being in contact with the blue gene and the red gene, 
or prevent the red gene from being in contact with the blue gene and the green gene, would those genes still be in the active state? And that was an interesting question. But we needed to see this. We needed to see this in even a single cell. And so what we did was we used some very nice fluorescent probes called single molecule fish probes from Arjun Rab's lab. And here you can see when all three of them are together, all three genes light up in three different colors. We were able to monitor at a single cell level where these cuts occurred. And if you look here, you can see these white spots. In this nucleus, there's one white spot. And in this nucleus, there are two white spots, which corresponds to the two chromosomes, the maternal and the paternal. And in this situation, we only have one cut. So we were able to use cutting edge microscopes in order to actually image or visualize where we had cut the DNA. And at the same time, visualize the transcription of interacting genes. So when we cut the blue gene, as you see here, we're able to image that, which is this white dot. In this particular situation, we have cut one allele, and in this situation, we've cut two alleles. At the same time that we cut the blue gene, we image the transcription from the green and the red gene. And you can see in the cell that has got one allele cut, we're able to image the transcription of the green and the red gene from the opposite allele. Whereas in cells where both alleles are cut, there's no transcription of either the green or the red gene. And this is incredible because the red gene is on an entirely different chromosome and the green gene is on the same chromosome as the blue gene, but very, very far away, 50 million bases away. So in doing this assay, we're able to show that by cutting the blue gene, we affect the transcription of the green and the red gene, which effectively shows that gene kissing is a cause of transcription. So for over 30 years, we've known about how one-dimensional gene regulation occurs, where a transcription factor and RNA polymerase bind DNA and convert DNA to RNA. Here, in this three-dimensional understanding we have of transcription, we see that the interaction of these three genes allows the conversion of DNA to RNA. And when we have an intact allele, we can see the RNAs being made but when we have no intact alleles, when we've disrupted the contact, we can see there's no RNA being made at either allele. Thus, as Stephanie said, she was able to show very elegantly that the contact between these genes is necessary for the transcription of RNA to occur. So this means that in the future, it may be possible for us to very discreetly stop cancers from occurring in cells simply by targeting one important member or gene in a multi-gene complex and preventing it from making contact with another gene. Or it may be even possible in the future to change a stem cell's fate from one particular type of stem cell to another simply by changing the contacts in which particular genes engage in during transcription. It's a very exciting future for stem cell biology, for human health, especially with our understanding of how genes are regulated because genes are at the center of all life.